Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be briefly explaining you about Warburg effect. Now what is this Warburg effect? Now the Warburg effect can be seen in plants which is related to photosynthesis and the Warburg effect that is seen in the humans is related with the cancer cells. Now what exactly happens in Warburg effect? As we all know glycolysis. Glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose into pyruvate and now the fate of pyruvate it all depends on whether the cell has got mitochondria and sufficient oxygen or if the cell do not have mitochondria or do not have sufficient oxygen. That's what is a uh, basic glycolysis is. So it is conversion of glucose into pyruvate glucose into pyruvate of course there are uh, several steps involved in this and then the two pyruvate molecules these two pyruvate molecules fate of these two pyruvate molecules as i told before it all depends on whether the cell has got mitochondria and sufficient oxygen so if the cell has mitochondria and sufficient oxygen so, two pyruvates will be getting down into the mitochondrial matrix and will be converted into two acetyl coase and these two acetyl coase will get into TCA cycle and further NADH, FADH2 coming from TCA cycle will be undergoing oxidative phosphorylation to give ATPs. Ultimately, we are going to get uh, 30 or 32 ATPs per glucose molecule. That is what is oxidative phosphorylation or oxidative degradation of glucose. Now, what happens if the cell do not have mitochondria and uh, if the cell do not have sufficient oxygen? So, no mitochondria or not sufficient oxygen is present. So, during that time, two pyruvates will be converted into two lactate molecules. And this is referred as anaerobic glycolysis. So when the glucose is undergoing anaerobic glycolysis, one glucose will give you only two ATPs. Now let's see what is Warburg effect. Now in tumor cells, there is something which is a special property of tumor cell that they have seen in relation with the glycolysis is all tumor cells. So what they do is it has been observed that it has been observed by Warburg so that is why this is called as Warburg effect so what he has observed is tumor cells they consume too much of glucose so the quantity wise too much of glucose is consumed by tumor cells that are highly proliferating cells and what they do is they are going to divert that those two pyruvates coming from each glucose molecule into two lactates even in the presence of mitochondria and oxygen. That is what is the contrasting feature in tumor cells. That is, in the presence of mitochondria, tumor cells in the presence of mitochondria and also presence of sufficient oxygen. During that time, they are going to divert two pyruvate into two lactate molecule. This is sometimes referred as aerobic glycolysis aerobic glycolysis usually in the textbooks aerobic glycolysis is uh, means glucose in the presence of oxygen and mitochondria undergoing TCA cycle and completely oxidized sometimes we refer that as aerobic glycolysis and in the absence of oxygen glucose converting into two lactate we call it as anaerobic glycolysis but in Warburg effect what happens glucose is converted to two lactate even in the presence of mitochondria and oxygen so this is what happens in tumor cells and that is what is the aerobic glycolysis which is explaining Warburg effect which happens in tumor cells. Now exactly why this happens? We don't know for sure right now why Warburg effect occurs in tumor cells. Some of the hypothesis that explains why Warburg effect can uh, means uh, is seen in tumor cells. These are hypotheses so there are pros and cons for all these hypotheses. So let me just briefly get into those hypotheses, some of those hypotheses. First hypothesis is Warburg effect, so especially tumor cells by diverting glucose into two lactate formation. So the quantity of glucose that is diverted will be 10 to 100 times higher of uh, quantity of glucose is diverted 
into lactate formation by tumor cells in the presence of mitochondria and oxygen. So, quantity wise number of ATPs that are produced by this diversion it is much more or much more efficiently they are going to make more ATPs than diverting glucose into oxidative phosphorylation because time wise if you measure the time amount of time that is taken to divert glucose all the way into 6 carbon dioxide molecules and conducting oxy oxidative phosphorylation using oxygen it takes more time and it's a less efficient uh, mechanism to generate more ATPs when compared to diversion of glucose into 2 lactate so in higher quantities uh, 10 to 100 times more than what generally is seen by tumor cells thereby they produce more ATPs efficiently this is what is one of the hypothesis now the second hypothesis is by diverting glucose into 2 lactate formation so the additional glucose because a lot of glucose is consumed by tumor cells so the additional glucose molecule can be diverted into other metabolic pathways especially pentose phosphate pathway as you might be knowing in pentose phosphate pathway in oxidative phase of pentose phosphate pathway so there will be generation of NADPH plus H plus and these NADPH plus H plus and also ribose 5 phosphate so NADPH plus H plus and ribose 5 phosphate these are the important things for generation of nucleotides to make DNA and RNA. So that is why the flux of glucose, additional glucose will go into pentose phosphate pathway. Now what is the other hypothesis? So whenever glucose is diverted into 2 lactate formation that means for every lactate that is produced so there will be release of one proton. So that means it decreases the uh, pH of the media, pH of the micro environment there by increasing H plus ion concentration that means this acidosis so micro environmental acidosis there so it will help in the tumor becoming more invasiveness so the invasiveness of the tumor it is helped by high concentration of H plus or the acidity, acidity or the acidosis in the micro tumor environment so that will lead to it give more invasive capacity for the tumor cells to spread causing metastasis and the fourth hypothesis is so the glucose converting into two lactate and these two lactate further they can undergo metabolic pathways and uh, this these metabolic intermediates coming out of lactate they will uh, change the cell signaling for going on in the tumor cells favoring it for uh, proliferation high proliferation because so the metabolic uh, uh, intermediates that is uh, coming out of lactate can decrease apoptosis or cell uh, uh, programmed cell death so this kind of alteration metabolic alterations can be seen now what is the basic cause for this Warburg effect why these things are seen one of the hypothesis says that so the mutation in tumor suppressor genes or the mutation in oncogenes these are the ones which will lead to changes in the metabolic pathways thereby favoring tumorigenesis. So these are some of the uh, points related with the uh, Warburg effect. I hope this video has uh, helped you in understanding what is exactly is the Warburg, uh, Warburg effect. Not necessarily in too much details of course you can go into details of Warburg effect if you do google search you get a lot of articles on Warburg effect. I just wanted to give you a brief introduction about what is Warburg effect. I hope this video has helped you. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video.